Welcome to another Minron Geological Modeling Tutorial, where we discuss various aspects of geological modeling to help and show you how you can get the most out of your project data. Today, I'm going to be discussing georeferencing, and this is obviously a well-known technique that people have used for a very long time, and there's lots of different softwares that enable you to be able to spatially georeference data. I'm going to be using Micromine software today, and the reason for that is mostly because of its ease of georeferencing and its ease of doing 3D georeferencing, and that's something we'll have a look at. But let's start with a little bit of classic 2D georeferencing. So I have a license area here. It's the one shown there in blue and red. And I'm going to just take a map that reflects in this area, and I'm going to drag and drop it in onto this. So there's my little mouse. I drag and drop it. It loads it in. I get taken to the other side of the planet. This is the map that I want to georeference, but as we saw, all my other data is sitting over here. So we've got data in two different coordinate systems. And we want to reference the one into the other. So in my mind, it's very easy. All I need to do is say, edit the georeference on the map, and it pulls up my georeferencer. Here we have coordinates. That's quite simple. All I have to do is match. Obviously, the quality is not great. So I'm going to pick a point here. I'm going to pick this point there, and I can match. I'll zoom in quite, get it nice and accurate. I can pick that point. It marks this point a pixel coordinate. There's the coordinates, the pixel range over there. And all we need to do is then type in the numbers that that will match that. So our x coordinate is going to be minus, I'll select there, minus 17000. And I can type in my other one, minus 30, minus 30, uh, sorry, 300 and 3,000. So there's my coordinates. And I can, put, you see it's plotted it there on the map. So now I can go through and add all of the other ones. But I'm quite fortunate in this case that I've actually got the license area plotted on here. And I have my license area as a vector um, that I've already loaded. So I can match these two based on that. So I'm just going to remove this point. We just Delete it over there. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some points on here based on the corners. So I click there, I snap it, and you see it automatically snaps onto this because it's a vector. I snap a point there. I can zoom out over here. I can go in there, snap another point, snap it on. And you can see it's already plotted it in the background based on just two points. We go and do our third point. You know, you always need a minimum of at least three points to do any kind of georeferencing, but the more the better. So I'm going to do four points on four corners of this map, and I'll allow it to snap onto that point. So now we see it's nicely rectified the image, and we get an idea of the error margin. And that's mostly associated to the pixel size and where I selected on this. So we've got a, a little bit of an error, 2.5 to 2.0 meter. We'll consider that acceptable. Over here is the elevation. Now this is not so important on 2D plan maps, but it can become quite important later when we're working with 3D maps. For now, I've just let it at a standard 1,500 meter um, above sea level. I'm going to save. I'm going to close my georeferencer, and there is my map nicely georeferenced in on my license area. Now this map that's in the background is a seismic survey map. And these are the traverses that were, were surveyed when the seismic survey was completed. Got a nice grid pattern. And why this is a value is I actually have the seismic profiles for each of these traverses along here. And that's how you can georeference them. Now, because we have this reference map georeference, we can also georeference into three dimensions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load on. I've already gone through the process of loading in these seismic sections. There they are there. Now I've got my base map. Now we can start viewing this in three dimensions. And why it's so useful, there you can see in the background, is all those seismic sections, I've managed to georeference them in. We have the planes, all the different directions. We have an elevation. And how we did that was just simply, I'll just go across a section here. Let's make the viewing plane a little bit bigger. What we did was based on that depth profile over there, and the point on the surface there 
I'll make even a second plane here so we can look at them both at the same time. So that's that point there, and that would be that point on the survey there. So we match that point to that point, this point on the other side, to this point over there, the other side of the survey, and that way you're able to georeference in your sections or level plans or whatever it may be in three dimensions in Micromine. Obviously, that then gives you immense value when trying to construct a 3D geological model. So I hope that's helpful. If you have a program such as Micromine that can do 3D georeferencing like this, you can also incorporate all of that historical data and benefit from it. And from this, actually, we managed to model all the geology for this specific deposit. And it was a great starting point um, for our drilling program and for all the exploration that followed. Hope you find that helpful.